G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and believe it or not, this huge basil specimen here is just the one plant. Not several grouped together, I planted three basil plants of different kinds in this bed two years ago. A Thai basil, a dark opal basil, and an all year round variety. But out of those three, only one remains. Do you know which one it is? Let's get into it. So what is it? You know it's not the dark opal variety because obviously it's not a dark leafed basil. Is it the all year round or is it the Thai basil? You'd be forgiven for thinking it is the Thai basil, but it isn't. It's actually the all year round variety. And I'd forgive you for thinking it's the Thai basil because I call it Thai basil more than I do all year round basil or perennial basil, which is its proper name. In fact, both plants can be considered a perennial. Although I'd reckon that this is more of a perennial and it's called perennial basil than Thai basil is. And there are some differences, but they are similar. And that's why I keep mixing these two up. And I don't only just mix them up in name. I use this basil primarily in Asian cooking and in Thai cuisine mostly because it's so similar in taste. And I can tell you, I've seen perennial basil sold or marketed as Thai basil in nurseries. And I know for a fact that one of our favorite Thai restaurants here in Brisbane uses perennial basil in lieu of Thai basil. Maybe not all the time, but I've been there several times when I've noticed and tasted that subtle difference of the perennial basil in their dishes instead of the Thai basil. And I've often wondered, I haven't asked them, but I've often wondered, do they have maybe a perennial basil plant out the back somewhere or what? So let's cook out or simmer out some of these differences a little more. Perennial basil generally has a smaller leaf than Thai basil does. And then most other basils, I mean, not the Greek or the mini varieties, of course. And it also is generally, I say generally, a thinner leaf too. But I have to be a bit careful because when you cut this back, the leaves can be different sizes. They can get larger. When it's getting a lot of water and plenty of nutrients, they can plump up more. And I'd recommend you do that too. The smaller leaves and thinner leaves tend to have a more concentrated flavor as well. Where they are similar is in color. Thai basil can have a purple tinge to it. It has purple stems, just like perennial. It can have purple flowers. Some of these leaves here have the purple tinge. Others have just a normal green leaf. But you could turn it over is usually the giveaway because you'll get that, I'm not sure if you could see that, but you'll get a, you'll get a purple underneath the leaf, which is more evident. If you look at it from the top and you look closely, you can see the discolorations. As far as flavor goes, if you know anything about Thai cooking, you'd know that the basil in Thai cooking, Thai basil is quite pungent. You notice it in a Thai dish. And perennial basil has that pungency also. In fact, I think it's a little more pungent than Thai basil. So just slightly more stronger. Pungent sometimes sounds a bit awful, doesn't it? I don't mean it in that way. It's a nice, beautiful, anesthetic type. Not anesthetic. Anesthetic? Anesthety? I don't know. You know what I'm trying to say. It's got that licorice type hint of flavor to it. And I think it's stronger personally in the perennial basil than it is in the Thai. He's still interested to know your opinion down below in the comments section as well on everything that I'm talking about because you might have a different opinion or you might think the same. I don't know, you might want to back me up, but uh, that's what I think flavor wise. And if we're gonna just stay on flavor and taste for a second, I really do think this is an excellent herb. It's one of the most used herbs we use in our garden because it's all year round, but just because of the, the taste, the instant 
hit it gives cooking if you're going to cook with it in a stew or in a stir fry or something like that or if you're going to use it fresh in a cold salad green mango salad is one of our very favorite dishes for several reasons but the thai basil there i go calling it thai basil no perennial basil gives it that great thai flavor compared to sweet basil which is the most basils we're all familiar with italian cooking pestos adding to pastas and all that i mean you can make pesto out of this too no problems but this is stronger sweet basil is sweeter so just by name you can tell the difference in taste and if i'm going to be honest i'd rather make a pesto out of a sweet basil than this this is mainly what we use for cooking and asian foods but you can use it in italian foods and italian cuisine and mediterranean cuisine as well which we do but i'm saying it stands up best in asian cooking as far as growing this herb goes you can see how big it is it actually gets bigger than this it is a really hardy and excellent herb to grow it not only lives for a long time so it's a perennial which means it lives more than just one season whereas say a sweet basil is usually grown as an annual one season or a few months get the plump leaves and you can cut it back several times and cutting basil back as with this one helps dramatically for keeping that plant producing plump leaves and growing longer but this one even without pruning will just continue to grow it produces as you can see a heck of a lot of flowers and you would think that it should produce a heck of a lot of seeds but the interesting thing from my point of view is being someone who likes to collect seed and who likes to grow again plants you don't see a lot of seeds at all made by this plant and if there are seeds they must be actually quite difficult to grow from seed otherwise you would see plants coming up all around the place seeing that it flowers so prolifically but that's why i believe this plant is propagated mostly through cutting and I intend to do that I just never have bothered because I've always just purchased a little plant from the nursery and then whacked it in the garden and got two or three or four years out of it and I hadn't really bothered with creating cuttings for it but I do want to do that and when I do it I'll let you know the results but I'm just saying from my research and you might be able to confirm this in the comments section it's best to grow this from a small cutting like you would say rosemary rather than trying to get it to grow from seed but once this thing is growing by jingos it can survive harsh conditions through the middle of our winter it was growing fantastically so much so that i decided to prune it back severely as an experiment to see if i cut this thing right back would it stunt it or what would happen and you can see only five or six months later the results it has grown back magically fast and just almost exactly like it was before in fact i've got to start cutting it back again I have given it the odd feed of liquid fertilizer and it is planted on the base of a whole heap of kitchen slops that I threw into this mini raised garden bed and that's probably one of the reasons why it's thriving so much it probably does have heaps of energy in that base for its roots to continually take that nutrient and keep growing the way it is it has that type of cottage garden appeal to it so it would make a beautifully ornamental plant if you planted half a dozen of these it would not only smell beautiful and look lovely but it would have a very nice effect and like i said this is a perennial it'll last for many years and you could prune it back or hedge it in balls or even hedge it like an old english hedge and i think that it'd cope very well with it so you'd not only have a really nice ornamental plant but you'd have something you can eat as well which is a double bonus isn't it and the other thing is because it flowers so much and looks so pretty the bees and other pollinating insects or good insects are attracted to it so it's got that wonderful ability to be able to attract the good bugs to your garden and apparently it repels 
the pest. So it's a good companion plant if you want to plant it with other food crops. I don't know. I haven't got enough evidence to put my hand on my heart and say, oh, this repels pests. But I can say whenever I'm out in the garden and around this thing, I don't get as many mosquito bites. So bottom line, I recommend that you get your hands on some perennial basil, some all year round goodness herb that you can plant in your garden. And it will not only look great, but it'll take your culinary levels to the next level. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. If you like this video, make sure you give it a, an all round thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now.